this is old cam. And not a spring chick. And we're talking about Blu-ray. Blu-ray, yes. Blu-ray, you know, basically it's listed as the hope of the future for the, uh, the DVD industry. Well, Sony bet the bank on this one. Three billion dollars they've lost so far. And they're, they're hoping that they'll be able to sell enough. Um, okay, the hardware sells is not where Microsoft, Nintendo, uh, Sony make their money, it's in the software sales. That's right, because when Xbox just came out, I remember Xbox 3, it, uh, Microsoft was losing $100 for every console that they sold, but just like printers where they made all the money off the ink, they made all the money for the Xbox, the uh, peripherals, the software. That's why you, you'll, see get, you'll see Guitar Hero 1, or Gar Gar uh, Gods of War 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until they quit selling those films. I mean, the, uh, you know, that's the big business. But uh, Sony is banking that Blu-ray is going to be an unbelievable seller among people. But the problem is, is you know, like we've discussed before, how many times have we been to an event where they've repackaged Star Trek? All the time. That's right. I mean, we. If it sells, keep selling it. <laughs> we've asked Mr. Shatner, you know, how many stories? And I love this one. How many stories can uh, you continue to remember? Uh, about your experiences with Star Trek, and he says, as many as I can make up. That is honest. That was a good statement. But um, we have, a, like we were talking before, I, I have seen, uh, right now, they're plugging the fact that uh, Independence Day, which is ran, it, it's running 24 hours a day all over the place on cable. You know, probably you, you you know you you know everything about. Actually, you probably don't know everything you know about it, but it's. But just know, in case you didn't. <laughs> no, they're, they're giving. We've had the uh, the release version, which is uh, you know the entire screen being filled up. Then we have the HD version, which is letterbox. We have the director's cut. We have the uh, cut where they're explaining how the movie was made. We have the cut where they're making it look like what might happen if something, you know, a news broadcast that makes it look what happened. But it, I like that's when they, they took, the, when they were doing the video of the, uh, they, they were filming video of, the, of, of uh, Independence Day so they could see how everything worked before they, you know, without having to see the process film. And so they've got this video of the car crashes, of, of people oh. giving interviews, and they've made it look like it's a news broadcast. But that's part of your, what you're going to be well, seeing on Blu-ray. Well, and part of it is, is just because a movie's available on Blu-ray does not mean it was shot in high definition you know, no. either. Because they've been doing that with some of the older movies. That's right. Uh, the, what, exactly what happens with that? Basically what they have to do here is where you have a problem with the actors, that the actors have legitimate grievance. They're basically reshooting the entire picture uh, on a high definition camera, frame for frame, in order to give it that high def look. It is still not a high def picture, no matter what they say. Oh. Because a high def camera, okay, this is a high def camera. You don't actually get to see it at its best because we have to, in order to put it we on, have to compress we it. have to compress it down into what you see the letterboxing, which all of the people that we, you know, across the board really hate the letterboxing, they don't like it, but we handle that. But you, you, uh, the actors are not being paid for that movie being made again, so they're really pissed about that too. But uh, it is an expensive process, which is once again why Blu ray costs so much money. And Blu ray. Okay, I mean, we, we went to see, we went to a thing, and we had a, a well-known filmmaker talking to Mr. Ray Harryhausen, and he totally, he hated Blu-ray with a passion. Well, is it just Blu-ray? It's high definition, High right? definition, but he, he had a Blu-ray system, and he said, the, you know, the high def makes everything that was shot before look so crappy. Well, and see, that's part of the challenge with the older movies, is because when they were shoot it, yeah. so... Sometimes you can might see the wires. Oh, yeah. They didn't catch it. Well, I mean, okay, folks. I know you're going to love this one. One of Leonard Nimoy's early Rocket Men from the Moon serial with Commando Cody is being produced for Blu ray. They only what? have a minor problem is that all of the wires that they used to hold the guys up with show plain. Wait, they didn't get that out? They can't because it would be cost prohibitive to go back. It's why. See, that's part of the challenge with the high definition, yeah. whether it's Blu ray or, yeah. well, would have right. been HD. In a, you know, they've got all. Okay, you have, um, you have like, yeah, beta versions of uh, Raider Man from the Moon. 
you have VHS versions, you have, you have multiple DVD versions. All of those versions are actually better than the high def version. So why would you want to go spend money for something that basically yeah, destroys just to represent your the consumer. We, we survey about 250,000 of them a year on all of these topics. And one of the things we know about the consumer is it's very hard to motivate them to change. Uh, it, you know, that's what all of your businesses are about, is trying to get them to change, either from one competitor to another, or from one uh, product to another. And in getting people to go from DVD to, uh, to Blu-ray will happen. I agree with that. The challenge is, how do you make them feel the need to do it soon rather than later? And that I, that I would put out there as the challenge, because from their perspective, they're going to see Blu-ray as, oh, it's just DVD plus. And they're probably right, at least for the next little while, until BD Live, the Profile 2.0 version of Blu-ray becomes a more common standard and more titles are being developed with these advanced features. So it's going to be hard to convince them that it's time to change. To me, the optimism that we all share up here is really only justified if we see the industry coming together to create a channel environment of stores, distributors, retailers, CE makers who are all creating one voice, Blu-ray. And that will cause people to realize, oh, that's the way of the future, that's what I have to do, and they'll do it sooner rather than later. Right, you know, and, and that brings me up to my next question, you know, I, I, I think we all agree that, you know, Blu-ray is inevitable, we just want it to be, you know, fast and, and get things going. And one of the big buzzwords of this whole uh, year has been, you know, our big task is managing the transition. Well, managing the transition, you know, I'm picturing, you know, Mike pulling up in a minivan, a bunch of consumers going to a store, here's a Blu-ray, <laughs> no, 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 not the up converter, get that Blu-ray. You know, but how do we do that? How do we manage the transition? How do we get the consumer to recognize the values of Blu-ray? Mike. Well, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of features in Blu-ray, and it's only going to get more exciting. And one of the things we found with the consumer is they're slowly but surely becoming HD snobs. That once they get used to watching their, their sports and their television programming in HD, it's very difficult for them to go back to a standard def. And they're the first to, you know, change over. The second thing is that you have um, word of mouth, which is the strongest, you know, recommendation you can get. And as, as the player availability starts to, you know, expand, I have another slide here if they can uh, drop that on, you'll see that the word of mouth will take off. And then to Jim's point, where it's one voice, um, the studios and Panasonic and Sony Hardware, we've been in Philips, we've been together, and we've tried to speak from one voice with a campaign, like a Got Milk campaign. Um, last fourth quarter, I think we spent like $25 million against it, you know, promoting Blu-ray. Um, this year, we'll spend, you know, another significant campaign that'll launch in uh, September or October. And it'll have that one voice that lays out the, the message. And the message is pretty simple. You know, it's the best uh, entertainment viewing uh, experience you can have. And it also plays your DVDs. And when you tell the consumer that simple message, mm -hmm. they buy in. The purchase intent is off the chart, right? And this chart right here shows hardware on the top and software on the bottom. And it lays it up against... Um, DVD. So you can see on top on the hardware in 1997, which was you know the first real year of DVD, and against the BDCE players and the PS3, which is BD compatible. And one of the interesting things you're seeing right now is, is almost 80% of the software sold is based on a PlayStation uh, console, and you know that group is not the heaviest tie rate you're going to find. You know, a, a BD console probably has a tie rate of 15 discs per year and above, way above for some. And a, and a PS3 has like a, a half to a one and a half tie rate. So as the BD consoles start to roll out, you're going to see a huge uptake, I believe, in software. And this is a software down there. And I believe by 2008, we're going to be very close to a billion dollars in software sales. Yeah. <laughs>